Well, today on Nova Legends Podcast, I have new George Mason coach, Tony Skin, back to his alma mater, uh, meeting him for the first time. Uh, uh, coach uh, Tony, thanks for joining me. No, absolutely, man. I appreciate, uh, appreciate the invite, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, of course. Well, let me, let me give uh, uh, the, the brief, uh, brief sketch of, of, your, of your background. You were Nigerian-born, home of the, uh, of the Super Eagles. I'm a big soccer fan. Um, came okay. here as, yeah, <laughs> came, yeah, came here as a two-year-old, uh, immigrated to the United, United States, ended up playing for Tacoma Academy, uh, went to Blinn uh, Juco. Um, and then you came to George Mason and you were part of that historic uh, run, uh, team that went to the final four, got the first at large bid in uh, George Mason history and went all the way to the final four, uh, played pro um, in Europe. You went, you played in Croatia, France, Germany, Ukraine, uh, uh, among others. Um, and then your path to the, uh, to head coach was a little different. You, you were AAU coach first at uh, team takeover, which is something I haven't seen. Uh, that much of, of a college coach, but I'm sure it's it's the way of the future. Uh, the, you were at Louisiana Tech under Eric Conkle. Uh, you're with Seton Hall uh, with Kevin Willard uh, at Ohio State with Chris Holterman and uh, uh, Maryland again with Kevin Willard. Uh, coach, did I get did I get most of that right? Yeah, no, nah, that was on point. That was a nice uh, breakdown. <laughs> it's a lot, coach. It's it's an incredible young career. So first of all, I want to talk about what, 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 did you, what were your feelings and where were you when you heard you got the George Mason job? It must have been an incredible, special moment knowing you're coming back and you're going to coach at your alma mater. Yeah, it's um, – honestly, I, I don't even know. I think I was in the car when I got the call. Um, I was in the car when I got the call from, uh, from Nina Rogers, who, you know, was serving as the, uh, as the uh, interim AD. And um, – you know, we had a conversation and she pretty much told me I have the job, but it wasn't official official for, you know, a couple of days once, um, you know, once the, uh, the negotiations and things like that, you know, kind of took place. But um, getting that phone call, I was in the car and, and you know, obviously headed home. Um, you know, it didn't hit me and it still hasn't hit me, to be honest with you, man, just uh, getting acclimated with everything that needs to be done. Um, you know, the recruiting, everything is moving so fast, man. I, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm in a daze right now, man. And I'm sure that when things slow down, I have a chance to think about it. <laughs> well, yeah, well, look, it, it, it was a great, it was a great hop by the, by the uh, university to go, to go back to a, uh, one of their own they had incredible success. Plus your resume, the, the places that you've been and the coaches you worked on, um, it's just an exciting for all the folks. I grew up in, uh, right next to George Mason. I went to Robinson High School, so I could I couldn't be happier um, for you as as well. So you know, look when you, when you think about Fairfax and George Mason now, it, has it changed a lot since since you played there? Oh man, it's 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 completely. I mean, the landscape is completely different um, than what I remembered it. You know, I've been back. I, I would say over the last. 17 years or so I've probably been back you know four or five times um you know early on when I was still transitioning from playing um I came to a couple games but since I've been coaching you know it's just been almost impossible to to get to any games and so this is really my first chance um you know getting a chance to come back and the campus is completely different you know George Mason used to be inside of the Patriots circle now everything's outside of the Patriots circle um so it's a university that's growing. Um, it's a university that's in, I mean, even academically a much, much, much um, better place than when I left it. Um, you know, it's, it's a big time school. No, there's no question. Um, and, you know, the, the first thing that comes to mind for me, if I, if I got a job as, as a head coach and, and the furthest I ever got as a coach is AAU coach. So I, so I shouldn't over um, overstate my, my qualifications here, but the first thing I would think about is, I mean, you've already made some big splashes in the transfer portal that I've, I've seen online, but it's getting your staff together um, because, you know, you, uh, a coach can only go, a head coach can only go so far. You know, it takes, it takes a team of coaches. So did you put a lot of thought in, in putting together your staff or, and are you still working on that? No, we're, you know, I, uh, <clears throat> I just have to hire a strength coach, but the rest of my staff, my support staff, I got everybody. Um, you know, that was, 
I wouldn't say that was the easy part, but you know, when you've been in a business um, and you've been around some good people and some successful people, you kind of always have in the back of your mind, if you had an opportunity, um, you know, who you were going to try to hire. And I was pretty much there with um, two out of my three assistants. Um, I shot for the stars with my third assistant and I was able to get him. Um, and Steve Kern, who was at St. Bonaventure for 13 years, knows the league has won, won in the league with less. And so, um, everybody else, I just kind of already knew I was going to hire them. Um, and I was able to pull them away from their respective, uh, respective, uh, institutions they were, they, that they were at, you know, previously. Yeah. Well, you know, well, coach, I talked about some of the, the folks you work with as an assistant coach and you played for J- coach L coach Larinaga. And, um, obviously you probably played for some great coaches overseas. Um, what are some, what is, what are some of the things you've learned about managing coaches? from some of the coaches that, that you have you know, in terms of delegating in terms of inspiring coaches to, to want to, to want to work for you at George Mason. Well, I think it's, um, you know, the core of, 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 for, for me personally, being a part of different staffs, um, even as a player, seeing different staffs and learning certain things. Um, I, I think it starts with good people, man. It's, um, it's truly, in my opinion, the difference between sustaining a culture of winning um, and not winning, but an overall culture, it starts with, it starts with the guys that are helping lead the program and that's your coaches. And so for me, you know, I I could go find a coach and, you know, whether they're a good person or not um, or a good coach or not, you know, those two things are kind of, you know, two totally different things. And the first thing I'm looking for is good people that I want to have around my players, you know, around my family. Um, And that's something that I knew, I was getting out of those guys. And so it was, it was a no brainer when you can have that kind of a combination of good people, but also people that were really, really good at their craft. Um, you know, that's something that, that, that I was comfortable in putting together. And I think that's what my staff is. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm excited when you, when you, uh, when you are able to announce the whole staff um, in terms of George Mason, now it, uh, it's in the suburb of Fairfax. Fairfax County is an enormous suburb of DC for folks that aren't from, from the DC area. Um, what are some of the benefits of selling Fairfax and George Mason um, to players? Cause you've already, I think you've got, you've already signed five players already. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's, um, you know, we have a little bit of a cheat code in this area, in this demographic. Um, you know, the DMV is so rich of, of really, really good players that can play at, you know, at all, all the levels for all the schools in this area. Um, I think it's just about identifying, you know, the ones that kind of fit the way you want to play. But, you know, it's simple, man. You know, George Mason is in Atlantic 10. Um, George Mason is a big, big state school. You got almost 40,000 students. And so while certain certain people may not know, um, you know, may not know certain things about it, you know, when they get on campus, they're blown away by those stats. You know, it's almost 40,000. Yeah, it's a commuter school, but there's also almost 7,000 students on campus. Um, And so where... You know, you're not a national program like Kentucky. You can easily fly under the radar as a school that, you know, might not have any any life. Um, but George Mason's got life. And, and from an academic standpoint, you know, it's becoming better and better from that standpoint and just being um, a high level institution. And so when you combine that with having an opportunity to play in Atlantic 10, which, you know, in my opinion, is the best mid-major league um, in college basketball in a major city right outside of D.C., which is a major market, um, you know, why not George Mason? That's, it's, a, um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful place. Um, so, so, Coach, you, um, you know, as a, as a player, um, you went to, to junior college, and um, mm-hmm. it benefited you, and you were able to, to come to George Mason, and you had, you had, uh, you, and you had great years at George Mason. Um, and I, and I know you've already dipped into the transfer portal. How important is junior college? And, um, and, and have you thought about how important junior college kids are to you? How important high school kids are? Or is it a matter of I'm seeing more and more of teams filling out the roster with older experienced players that, you know, are proven co- uh, commodities? Yeah, it's, it's definitely that. It's becoming that. Um, but again, everybody's situation is different. 
Um, you know, every player is going to be different. You know, every institution is going to be different. I think there's still um, there's still enough players out there that deserve a chance at all those levels, high school, junior college. It's just about timing. Um, you know, the JUCO world is, is, is a lot harder um, from a transitioning standpoint than it is for a guy that's already been at a four year. That's just the that's just the truth. And, you know, we're going to try to identify guys that can help us compete. Um, but then also can handle their own um, academically. And so um, that w- I would say that's just case by case. But, you know, the ever-flowing world of um, the portal is always going to put certain guys at a disadvantage just because everybody wants older and everybody wants experience. Um, that's just what the landscape has kind of become. Yeah, it, it definitely is changing um, so quickly. Have you also found, I mean, uh, coming from University of Maryland, uh, AC, uh, I'm sorry, Big Ten school, uh, Ohio State, another Big Ten school, Seton Hall, Big East. Ha, ha, are the type of players that are interested in George Mason and interested in your recruiting pitch, has it changed? Um, my guess is, you know, at, at George Mason, maybe it's a slightly different uh, candidate than you were you were talking to at Maryland, or are, have you found um, that kids are open-minded to, uh, uh, to Atlantic Ten as, um, as, as well as uh, um, on the Big Ten? Yeah, I mean, it's going to always be, um, you know, always going to be challenged to get, you know, you start talking about rankings and things of that ma- nature. It's going to always be a challenge to get those type of guys. Um, I think the, the 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 strategic way is to go after whoever you like, and you know, if you don't get them the first time around, you have a you have a better chance of getting them the second time around. Um, but more or less, man, you got you got to identify the guys that are really good players. It may just be short of cracking, um, you know, high major love. And those guys are, those are, you know, those are the three, four year guys that you can end up winning with. Yeah. Well, uh, well, well coach, we talked about uh, Jim Laranega a little bit. He was your coach at George Mason. You had that historic uh, final four run. He had another uh, final run this year. Uh, what are some of the things you learned from jo- Jim Laranega as a coach? And I, and I bet you he's probably evolved a little bit over the last 15 years or so. Yeah, no, he's, um, you know, Coach L is still the same Coach L, man. I saw him last week in Atlanta and uh, had a chance to talk to him for a few minutes, man. But, you know, he made, he made playing basketball fun. Every day we came to work, but we always had, we always had fun. It was a positive, um, it was a positive, you know, two to three hours um, whenever we went to work. And I think that's the one thing that stood out with us um, in that run. We, were, we weren't playing with pressure. You know, we, we knew what he expected from us. Um, we were an older team. We were a connected group. And, um, you know, that started with his leadership and his staff. Um, but, you know, I'd, I'd say it's still the same Coach L, to be honest with you. I was just so happy to see him. Um, you know, I wanted to see him, you know, take it all the way. But just to see him still still being successful, um, you know, 17 years later, man, it's truly remarkable. It, it really is. I used to play pickup basketball with Coach L. I went to University of Virginia, and he was an assistant coach there. He was a he was a fierce competitor, uh, to, uh, to say to say the least. I mean, he would uh, he would he would get after it in in you know any basketball situation. Um, you know, one thing that Coach Larinaga has done, he's he's made great use of the transfer portal um, this year. He has, and in other years. And if, if anyone is, uh, I don't want to say mastered it because things are are changes changing daily in college basketball. But he's done a tremendous job with it. Um, how do you build, have you thought about how to build culture with all these moving parts, you know, five new players, you have some players transfer and followed coach English to uh, Providence. Uh, have you thought about how do you build culture with all these uh, moving pieces? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's about, you know, it starts with the relationships. Um, I think pouring into these guys through the recruiting process, you, you, you kind of get a feel of, you know, who you're getting and what you're getting. And I think that, you know, as, as good assistants, they judge that and they kind of know what they're bringing in the door. And, you know, that's half the battle. Um, I do think that creating, you know, an everyday, an everyday environment of, you know, we're here, we're here, it's a big family and we're here to work. We're here to be successful on and off the court. Um, And I think when the players are seeing that every day um, and they're trusting, trust, trusting and believing um, you know, that at the end of the day, their success is, 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 you know, 
the most important thing for myself and my coaches. I think that's that's how you build culture. You know, just the everyday work, the everyday sweat. You know, we're a young staff, and so we're going to get after it. Um, you know, we want these guys to go to war for us. You know, we got to go to war for them. I think that's where it starts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's no, it's not that about it. It's, it's one day you got to eat an elephant one bite at a time and it's going to be, it's going to be fun uh, 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 doing that. So of course, one thing that you were born in Nigeria, as I, as I mentioned earlier, and obviously foreign players have had a huge effect on basketball and African players uh, over the last 10, 15 years have really uh, made giant strides in, in the NBA game and, and also on the international on the international scene, do you think do you think the international kids, um, the African kids, will will be kids that you'll recruit at George Mason during your time here? Oh yeah, I mean we're gonna you know we're gonna recruit everybody, but there's obviously a a common denominator there with me being Nigerian, you know me playing on a national team, me being a part of the Nigerian Federation. You know I'm always gonna have um, you know one leg up on guys that are are uh, being recruited, you know, I'm sorry, other programs that are recruiting Nigerian kids, you know, it's something that, you know, I've kind of carved my niche um, over the last couple of years at the institutions that I worked at. And so it's always a little bit more organic, you know, parents or whoever it is that's involved in the recruitment, they trust a little bit more when they know. Um, that's just the, you know, fortunately for myself, that's just the, um, that's just the way it goes. Um, but we're definitely going to include not just Nigerians, but just international, international kids in general. We just, um, you know, we got on a recruiting trail and signed a kid that was, you know, you know, a foreign kid as well um, from France. And so those those type of things are how you can, you know, you can help your program from a recruiting standpoint. And we're definitely going to take advantage of it. Yeah. Um, so, so, Coach, uh, have you thought a lot about and I bet you have over the years as an assistant, have you thought a lot about how you want your teams to play or is it a matter of once you get the kids you know, into Fairfax and you look at them, you can see what you have and what fits this particular uh, bunch of players. Um, so have you thought about yeah, that much? A, yeah, it's a combination of both. Um, you know, I never want to be that coach that just runs an offense just to run an offense and it doesn't match as, um, the personnel. Um, and so we kind of cater to that while we recruited. We recruited guys that were going to fit in a system that we potentially want to play in. And, you know, that's going to be, a fast paced offense that's, that's predicated um, off of, off of our defense. You know, we are going to press, we're going to get after it full court wise um, in the half court, you know, we're going to play some matchup zone and try to junk it up a little bit. Um, but that's kind of where we're, you know, that's kind of where we're, uh, where we're starting with. Yeah. Have, um, who are some of the coaches that you had overseas that were memorable and, and, and with, with, with the uh, overseas game, your experience as a player, would have any influence on how you coach here? Um, yeah, you know, there's definitely um, there's definitely a different a different way of of life and the way players play in Europe. Um, you're starting to see it a lot more here in the states. Obviously, everybody being able to shoot the basketball, um, you know. But, but I gotta have guys on the floor that can at all positions. To be honest with you, that can make plays. Got to be able to make plays, whether it's, you know, shooting ability, being able to handle, being able to defend. Um, you know, that's that's I would say that's the most important thing. And, you know, definitely my experience overseas helped me to just kind of put together um, just in my mind, you know, certain things that I like, certain things I don't like. I had a chance to play for a coach named uh, Christian Monchu. Um, he was my coach when I was in France, my third year in France. And that was my most efficient year. And the one thing that he did, he put me in situations and ball screen situations and ISO situations. He put me in those situations and it really, really helped my efficiency. I played less minutes, but I had better numbers. Um, but that, that also came and was predicated by the freedom that he gave me and not just myself, but a few of my teammates. We were a really, really good team. So I, I do believe in freedom. Um, I've been a part of some places where, you know, it's a little bit more, um, you know, game was a little bit slower and that works for certain players. Um, but I mean, you know, you can't tell me a guy that, that, that doesn't want to play in a fast paced offense with some freedom. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, coach, what about being an AAU coach? Now you, you spent three years with team takeover, an amazing AAU program in DC. Now all of us here, you know, we hear the stories about AAU and the crazy parents, 
you know, the shoe deals and AAU, we, um, it's, we all like to make fun of AAU now. That's, that's, what, that's what basketball fans do. How has being an AAU coach influenced your coaching? I mean, it's helped, you know, it helped me, you know, kind of just transition from um, playing and not really knowing the landscape to then getting thrown into the fire of understanding the landscape, understanding, you know, recruiting, understanding who's good, you know, who to call, um, just understanding just, you know, what today basketball looks like. You know, it was, it was so much different, even though I'm not that old. Uh, when I got into it at two, in 2013, you know, it was so different when I was in high school back in, you know, 2003 or four. Um, and so the, to see that type of change in just in less than 10 years, I got a chance to got kind of get thrown right into it um, with a program that was, you know, elite and still is. Um, so it, it's definitely helped me and it kind of fast fed me into understanding the dynamic um, of coaching. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, Coach Conkle, you know, he felt comfortable in hiring me in that in that situation, even though I didn't have experience. He knew that I had the relationships. Yeah. Well, I, well, last question, Coach. And this has been great. I really appreciate your time. You know, you and Coach uh, Dwayne Simpkins were kind of like two ships passing in the night. He was at George Mason as an assistant. He ended up getting a job at American, and you you came back uh, from Maryland to your alma mater at, at George Mason. Have you guys been in touch? Are you, are you friends? It's interesting because I'm sure you guys are probably going to bump into each other a lot on the recruiting trail. Yeah, no, that's, you know, that's basketball, man, the full circle. You know, I know Dwayne well. I'm happy for him. You know, he got an opportunity, um, and, you know, so did I. And so it's the basketball world. When you're doing good things, man, sometimes this stuff happens. Um, you know, I'm happy for him, and, you know, we, we're actually – I actually got to give him a call back here because he texted me this morning as, as we're both trying to figure out scheduling and things of that nature. But it's um that's the game, man. That's what it brings, you know, just a full circle. You just have to always be sharp and make sure that you're 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 putting yourself in the position to get an opportunity. And um, he got one. I got one. And I'm happy for him. Yeah. I mean, I think both schools made tremendous hires. And I and, and my guess is both both schools are going to be uh, we're going to see them going deep in the postseason um, really soon. But anyway, coach, look, this has been great. I, I really appreciate you coming on on such short notice. Uh, can't wait to come out there and watch you guys play this year. Um, you know, hopefully we, we can connect really soon. Um, but I just really, you know, want, want to wish you luck. And thanks, thank you again for coming on. No, I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, coach. All right.